Hello everyone, Jules here. Today I'd like to make a video about two quite interesting reference books that are esoteric reference books. The first one is called The Cambridge Handbook of Western Mysticism and Esotericism and it's edited by Glenn McGee. So here is the book has the great famous painting print of the artwork of William Blake on the cover. It's quite a thick book. It's about 450 pages and this is a really useful reference book for people who would like to have everything in one place. Um, particularly from a historical perspective. All of the chapters are divided into uh, different historical periods. So I always find that quite useful. And it's really quite a useful reference book. This was only published about five years ago, so it's quite easy to get. And I quite like this book because, um, as I said, I like the way it's divided into the different um, periods of history, but there's some very good articles in here written by um, esoteric experts in their field that are quite well regarded. So I really like that. And so I'll just give you an idea of what's in the book. This is a completely print book, like there's no um, pictures or diagrams in here, but that's not really required for this kind of book because the articles in here are really worthwhile. So I'll just give you an idea of what's in here. It says 475 pages. So the first category, so the chapters are grouped into the different periods of history. So the first category is antiquity, dating back to ancient times. So I'll give you um, some ideas that are in here. You've got ancient mysteries, Pythagoras, these are all the different chapters. Plato and Neoplatonism. Hermeticism and Gnosticism. And early Jewish mysticism. So these are the sum of the seven different chapters um, that are all... Um, part of the antiquity category and as I was saying a lot of these articles are written by very well regarded experts. Then you have the middle age period so you have a chapter on Kabbalah and you have uh, medieval Christian mysticism because that's when that's a period when it really began. So you have that. There's even a chapter on Sufism as well for people who are interested. Then you get into the next category, which is the Renaissance period. So you have Renaissance Hermeticism, which is the you know, the true flowering of, of that. Renaissance Hermeticism, Christian Kabbalah, same thing. Uh, both of those things really date from this Renaissance period. Rosicrucianism, same thing again. I mean, these things are very much to do with the Renaissance period. Freemasonry. Freemasonry is more to do with the 1700s and the 18th century. So this category is the Renaissance and later period. 
So it goes into the later period of the 18th century, um, towards the end of the chapters. So you've got at least seven chapters in that category as well. Then you have got the 19th century category. So you have um, Rudolf Steiner and Anthroposophy, The Golden Dawn and the OTO, Gurdjieff and the Fourth Way, and Carl Jung and Jungianism. These are just, you know, all the examples of the chapters that are here for the different categories. Then the last category is Common Threads. This is a really useful category because it covers the topics that are also part of these periods as well. So that's why they're called this category Common Threads. So you have Alchemy, Gnosis, and magic in all three different chapters for the common threads. Then at the end of all of this, on when you get to page 440, there is a really great section on suggestions for further reading. And that is a great section of books of bibliography because um, these suggestions are grouped according to subject. So that, that is a great uh, section of the back of the book. And then you have an index, which is really useful as well. So I really like, I really like this book. In very typical fashion, I mean, it's called a handbook. And very often I find handbooks uh, not all that small, really. They call it a handbook, but, you know, this is more substantial than that. But I think this is really worth getting for people who are interested in all those subjects, but they want articles that are written by uh, current experts in the field. So I think this is a great book. So for people who are interested, I'll put some details below the video. The Western Mysticism and Esotericism, Cambridge Handbook, edited by Glenn McGee. So that was only published about five years ago. The second book is quite a large, heavy one. It's paperback like the, like the other book. Um, this is quite large, but it's a, it's about the same amount of pages, but it's a it's a wide book. Like it's almost like a coffee table size, coffee table book. This book is written by quite a well-regarded esotericist who was a contemporary of Alistair Crowley. There's a very good chance that they may have known each other because they were both uh, in England at the same time. This is written by Lewis Spence who was very well regarded uh, in esoteric subjects. He wrote several books. This is published by Dover. It's called an Encyclopedia of Occultism. I'm just going to hold this up briefly because it is a little bit sort of ungainly to handle. It's about the same amount of pages. It's about 450 pages. There are some black and white pictures in here. Not diagrams as such, but black and white pictures. A bit like the sort of artwork that's on the cover. So this is really worth getting um, from an interest point of view. Um, it's This one's all in alphabetical order, so it is like a type of it is an encyclopedia. Uh, the other thing that's really interesting about this book, I particularly wanted this because it was published in 1920. And 
The reason why I wanted this is because it's got information um, that is more obscure and hard to get. Um, there were a lot of later books about these sorts of topics that were based on this book, you know, um, excerpts of the different subjects. Um, these did influence later writers and later uh, researchers of the occult. So it is quite an important book. You just need to keep in mind that it was, um, this is the original 1920 um, version that's been you know, reissued. Uh, it's got a select bibliography in the front of the book. So that, that's according to subject. It's not a really large bibliography, but it's quite useful. Um, there is an introduction by the author and a preface by the author. And there's an index as well, which is really useful. I know you might may think um, that if it's in alphabetical order, why do you need an index but you actually do because there are some subjects that are within um, within the sub within the uh, alphabetical listing or they may be kind of cross-reference things that you may be looking for this book is not cross-referenced um, in the A to Z main section so the index is really useful when you are looking something that may be under several categories or, uh, or whatever um, but just to give you an idea of some of the black and white images I mean these are quite these are quite interesting I mean some of these look like and they probably would be taken from um, you know, some really famous drawings of um, a life as Levi. Um, and like I was saying, you know, these are just experts in the, experts in their field. Lewis Spence was such an expert. Um, I'm just having a look at what else is in here. Uh, most of the most of the black and white pictures have got the credits of, of where they were where they were taken from, but I just I just like this um, because of its you know more obscure information and and some subjects that just do not appear in later um, esoteric reference books. They're just not there. So the the referencing the credits for the black and white pictures are usually under the picture itself, but they're not always there. But I, I think I think you know it, it, it's it's a great book, but. This is really for the fans, you know, the people who want something more obscure, uh, with the more sort of hard to get esoteric information. Um, it's really worth it for that. Um, other people would be more interested in the other book that I just showed because they want something more contemporary. I can understand that. But for people who want something um, you know as I was saying um, something that sort of predates the usual kind of information that you see around a lot in later years you know that's and, and Lewis Spence which was just so well regarded and and I can see why um, you know, you can tell by the writing of all of the different subjects in here that he was 
you know, he was right up there with the experts um, at the time. You know, the, the kinds of people who wrote on Egypt and anthropology, you know, the, the kinds of people from this period. Um, but I think it's a great book. So, An Encyclopedia of Occultism by Lewis Spence. And I'll put some details below the video. It's published by Dover. It's quite easy to get. So it's quite a great, great book for people who are interested. So I'll put the details for both of these books. And I think, you know, either of them are both worth getting for people who want actual reference books to keep on their shelf. Um, when they are interested in different things and they would just like to go to, you know, one place to, to get the information. So I'll put some details below the video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.